Um, hi, my name is Katie Stallhead. I'm the 2020 Rotary Club intern for, or the 2020 Rotary Club of Shades Valley intern for this summer. Um, thanks for inviting me to speak to you about the, um, what I've done over this summer. And as I'm sure you all are all aware, this has been a rather unusual last several months and that has sort of extended into this internship. So I believe that I have made the most of it. So to start, since I haven't introduced myself in person, I figured I would go ahead and give you a little bit of background about myself. First, I attended, Shades, or I attended Jefferson County International Baccalaureate School in Shades Valley High School from 2012 to 2016. While I was there, I interned at the high school, or interned at the Botan Birmingham Botanical Gardens as a um, high school intern. Um, this was really the first time I had the opportunity to engage with science, and I found a love for plants that I did not have before. And that really encouraged me to continue doing science. Um, while I was at Shades Valley, or while I was at the Birmingham Botanical Gardens, I had the opportunity to do some research on mycorrhizal fungi and which are symbiotic fungi that form on plant roots and trade sugars for nutrients, which increases plant growth. For this project, I ended up winning the Alabama Academy of Sciences Orgas Scholarship. And then somewhat um, unrelated, I went on to win the National Merit Scholarship. And then with this scholarship, I was able to attend UCF on a full ride. And while I was there, I did a lot more research continuing with plants. Um, so this is a project that I was working on, again, with mycorrhizal fungi and sunflower. And this is about a quarter of the plants I grew up for this project. While I also was a um, research technician at the US Geological Survey, where I worked a lot with cyanobacteria and harmful algal blooms, I also had the opportunity to work on projects with this ornate green algae which are a group of algae called desmids, which can be found all over the Everglades National Park. And then for both of these projects, or both of these large projects, I won the Goldwater Scholarship, which is a prestigious scholarship that goes to undergrad students who are doing or making great strides in research. And then last year, I attended a internship at the Boyce Thompson Institute, which is a research, research institute with the Cornell University. And this was funded by the National Science Foundation, where I again had the opportunity to work with mycorrhizal fungi in a number of different scenarios. So now that you know a little bit about me, let me show you what I've been doing over the summer. First, um, this is where I've been working and where I've been spending most of my time. Um, you might be familiar with this area. This is the Bruno Vegetable Garden, as well as the uh, areas around it. To the below this picture, you have the conservatory just to orient you. Um, so this is the Bruno Vegetable Garden with its beautiful arrays of plants that, that we um, end up donating to the Harvest for the Hungry, as well as the Carver Teaching Garden where they plant corn or where they plant soybean, no peanut, <laughs> cotton, and sweet potato, as well as some, some other three sisters gardens and um, similar types of gardens. And then finally, the pollinator garden, which is situated relatively close by. So one of the first things I did um, when I got here this summer was I started working in the pollinator garden. Um, this, pollin or this pollinator garden was originally established by um, a Girl Scout troop, um, probably almost 10 years ago. And um, it's, because of a number of different um, issues that we've had with this area, it's sort of gotten overlooked. So I was able to spend a little bit of time weeding it and getting it back up into top shape. So this is what it looked like before I started and then what it started to look like at least relatively, after, or relatively later after I started weeding. Um, and after we finished weeding, this allowed me to go back through and map what we still had in this um, area. And also we had a number of beautiful plants that popped up, such as this ashy sunflower in the corner or the butterfly milkweeds or the, um, the maypop vine that, or the maypop flower that's also pictured here. We also had a number of pollinators come by and visit these um, wonderful blooms. 
such as just native bees and the honey bees that are located above the gardens, but also um, the Gulf fritillary, which is pictured over here on a um, on a coneflower, as well as its caterpillars that are also pictured. And so as the summer progressed, I started moving more into the Bruno vegetable garden. Um, due to COVID-19, a lot of the volunteers that um, usually work this garden were not able to come in and do a lot of the maintenance that this garden requires. So I sort of took a leading role in making sure that everything that needed to be done for this garden got done. So as part of this effort, I um, did just about everything from um, planting and create and helping to create some of these plots, as well as just weeding and harvesting and IDing pests. So for example, here's us planting some of the tomatoes as well as preparing some of the okra beds at the very beginning of summer as well as some of our um, beans that are just now popping up in this picture. Um, some of the pests that we had, that we had to identify, or diseases in some cases, like on this left, on the left of this slide with the tomato plants and the verticillium wilt. In the center, I have some pictures of some armyworms that we had a relatively bad problem with this summer. And probably one of my least favorite things this entire summer has been the squirrels. We have not actually been able to get any tomatoes out of um, one of our beds because the squirrels have completely overtaken them and in blatant view of our do not pick the vegetable signs. <laughs> so um, because I'm so proud of this garden, I've decided to show you some pictures that we have of some of the great things that are coming out of this garden. Um, in the top left corner, we have some of our bush bean beds, which are looking really fanta or fantastic right now. Below that, we have some eggplants. Um, and you can actually see some of the white eggplant peeking out behind the leaves. We have some cherry tomatoes in the center, which um, got so big that they actually overrun the, uh, overran the trellis that they were growing on and have started sort of falling in on themselves. And then on the right two pictures, it's probably my favorite bed in the garden right now. It's the okra, and they are looking so good. This is about, the okra right now is about six to eight feet tall. And you can see some of the blooms in the lower right corner, as well as a little tiny okra starting to form. Um, as I mentioned, all of this food ends up going to the program for Harvest for the Hungry, which um, feeds a lot of the homeless population in downtown Birmingham, as well as throughout the Birmingham area. Um, so here you can see some of our harvest just from one day. We have plenty of eggplant and cucumbers and zucchini, and we've been getting a lot of green beans as well. And over the last couple of weeks, we've started actually getting some pretty decent harvest of some of our cherry tomatoes, which you can see here. Another thing that I did in this garden, with, along with the help of folks from the library, um, I was able, we were able to plant the Native American garden in one of the beds in this area. So you can see some of the sunflowers are actually really, really large now and are about to start forming blooms in the top left. And in the top right, we have some very healthy bird house gourds. And then one of the coolest parts, I think, in the entire vegetable garden is the three sisters that we have planted here. Um, right now, the corn is probably about eight to 10 feet tall, maybe. And this is actually, this garden is um, a traditional way that Native Americans used to plant um, many of their crops. So what they did is they would plant corn first, and then after a week, they would go through and plant beans. And then the corn, or the corn serves as a trellis for the beans. And then later, they'll go and plant squash, which covers the ground and shades it to keep in moisture and to keep out weeds. Um, and then as, um, I mentioned in my intro, a lot of the research that I've been doing has been on um, soil microbes, so mycorrhizal fungi. So I decided to sort of bring a little bit of that back into this internship. So um, I worked with rhizobial bacteria, which are a bacteria that also form nodules on plant roots. These bacteria are going to fix nitrogen from the air, which um, allows the plants to have more nitrogen available to them. But these um, rhizobia are not found on all plants. They're usually just found on beans, peanuts, soybeans, and peas. 
Um, if you might recall, George Washington Carver actually really pushed for the usage of peanuts in growing because of their nitrogen fixing capabilities, as well as the fact that it produced a lot of protein for people. So um, we use a couple of our bean beds that we have growing to do some experimentation on whether or not adding rhizobia would be beneficial to the plants themselves. Um, but currently we've found that there's not really a difference in growth or yield, but um, there's still a possibility that we might see a difference. This could also just be because the um, soil that we have is also just really great and high in nitrogen already that maybe the plants just don't need to fix it for themselves. And then probably one of the most fun parts of the internship is always the field trips. And this has been one that um, has sort of been a little bit difficult to get to this year. That being said, we still managed to have several socially distant field trips. So for example, um, we went to the Cahaba River National Wildlife Refuge and got to see the Cahaba lilies in full bloom. In that same trip, we went to Perry Lakes Park, which is a cypress swamp in Perry County, and we got to botanize while out there. We also went out to Huntsville Botanical Gardens and got to meet a um, expert in wild gingers and explore their grounds. And we went out to Kill Mountain Preserve where we got to see the rare Moorfield feather flower. And then finally, I've been working a lot with the Kingston Teaching Garden where um, it's or located in Woodlawn. And so we've been helping them plant and uh, maintain those gardens out there. As far as future plans, now that the summer is over, I'm actually going to be heading out to Oxford, Ohio to attend Miami University for a PhD program in evolutionary biology, where I hope to continue studying plants and mycorrhizal and other symbioses. So thank you for funding this internship and I look forward to any questions you have.